Gazette headlines were following at this hour. The Israeli military says Gaza City has been fully surrounded as Israel intensifies its offensive against Hamas. Despite calls for a ceasefire, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says there will be no ceasefire until all the hostages are released. South Korea's ban is short selling for all locally listed stocks until the end of next June. The move comes as concerns rise over illegal activities by global investment banks, with authorities set to investigate 10 major global banks. South Korea and the United States are hosting a joint space forum in Seoul, seeking to boost cooperation on space technology and pursue a safe and sustainable space environment. Good afternoon. The Israeli military says Gaza City has been fully surrounded as Israel intensifies its offensive against Hamas. Despite calls for a ceasefire, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says there will be no ceasefire until all the hostages are released. Lee Sing Jae has the latest. The Israel Defense Forces said Sunday that it had fully surrounded Gaza City and split Gaza into two. According to IDF spokesperson Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari, the Gaza Strip is now split into North Gaza and South Gaza, adding that there are now widespread strikes on terror infrastructure below ground and above it. Hagari called the encirclement of Gaza City a significant stage in the war between Israeli forces and Hamas militants, as it's now able to pinpoint operations deeper within Gaza. Despite international calls for a humanitarian ceasefire, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reiterated on Sunday that there will be no ceasefire until all hostages are returned first. I want you to know that there's one thing that we won't do. There won't be a ceasefire without the return of our hostages. Take it completely out of the lexicon. We say it to our enemies and to our friends and we'll simply carry on until we win. We don't have an alternative. Meanwhile, Iran warned Sunday that the U.S. will be hit hard if there is no ceasefire. According to the Iranian defense minister, Tehran's message to the Americans was to immediately stop the war in Gaza and implement a ceasefire without further elaborating on the repercussions. Iran considers the U.S. to be militarily involved in the armed conflict. The White House, on the other hand, says hostage negotiations are taking place and added that fighting may be paused to ensure their safe movement. Speaking to CBS on Sunday, Deputy National Security Advisor Jonathan Feiner said negotiations are taking place quietly behind the scenes and that Washington believes there is an opportunity to release a significant number of hostages. When asked if Israel would agree to a ceasefire, Feiner added that the U.S. will work hard to make it happen. Lee Seung Jae, Arirang News. A joint space forum co-hosted by South Korea and the United States kicked off in Seoul on Monday as the two countries marked the 70th anniversary of their alliance this year. The two-day event is expected to bring together some 40 government officials and experts from both countries to focus on ways to boost cooperation in space-related policies, diplomacy, security, and other areas. At the opening ceremony, South Korea's Foreign Minister Park Jin stressed that the country plans to make significant investments in space technology and encourage private sector engagement while building international partnerships on key space technologies. He also highlighted that South Korea is fully committed to ensuring a safe and sustainable space environment through its alliance with the U.S. Last Friday, President Yoon suk yeol held talks with Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar as the two countries seek to expand their 40-year relations based on their common values. Our presidential office correspondent Woo Soo-young had an exclusive interview with the Irish PM. Ireland is keenly seeking a greater partnership with South Korea based on their values of freedom and innovation amid complex global challenges. That's according to Irish Prime Minister Leo Varadkar in an interview with Arirang News on Friday. Varadkar's working visit to Seoul marks the first trip by an Irish head of state in the history of their bilateral relations, which stretch back 40 years. 
The Irish PM highlighted the two republics' shared values, particularly under the UN administration, as they collaborate closely in tackling climate change, global insecurity and threats to democracy. Given the rapidly changing geopolitical dynamics that we're seeing, um, including the European Union's sort of change of approach to the Indo-Pacific, you've actually updated your Asia-Pacific strategy. So, uh, in uh, what ways do you see opportunities and also challenges for both Ireland and South Korea? Well, I, I, I think fundamentally the, the, the world is changing. Um, the uh, economic and political power is uh, less concentrated in Europe and America and is now more multipolar, um, Asia being uh, hugely significant politically and economically, much more so than would have been decades ago, um, but also a, a more dangerous world. You know, we see what's happening, for example, in the Middle East at the moment, uh, the conflict in Ukraine, um, uh, other parts of the world where there are potential flashpoints. And I, that's why I think countries that do very similar values um, need to work together. And the European Union and Korea uh, have very similar values around free enterprise, around free trade, uh, around democracy and human rights. And we really need to strengthen that relationship. And uh, we're very keen as Ireland to be part of that. Well, you actually visited the demilitarized zone yesterday, which is the border area between South and North Korea. So I'm wondering what was running through your mind at that moment and uh, also how you're planning to collaborate with South Korea for uh, regional security, especially when it comes to uh, peace on the Korean Peninsula. Well, it was it, it was fascinating to visit. Um, uh, in many ways, it's a misnomer demilitarized zone because it is, of course, heavily militarized uh, and heavily fortified. Um, and I think one of the best ways that we can work together, Ireland and Korea, is, is through the United Nations in particular. And even as we speak, Irish and Korean troops are serving together uh, in South Lebanon, which is a, a very dangerous place at the moment, uh, but have been there helping to keep the peace there. Particularly as President Yoon Sogo pushes for global solidarity, for peace, development and climate action. Baradka said he hopes the two republics can also work together to increase multilateral cooperation and institutions as middle power countries. We're relatively small countries, albeit with big economies and uh, a lot of trading influence. Um, and for countries like ours, uh, we'll do best in a world that is rules based, that has institutions that function that it's not just the really big countries that make all the decisions or those countries with massive military economic power. The Irish leader further highlighted new emerging industries, including renewable energy and digital technologies, as key areas of win-win partnership between the two leading IT nations. I think one is, is certainly energy, and um, Korea is at the forefront in terms of um, making that green transition towards renewable energy and battery storage. Some investments by Korean companies happening in Ireland. Uh, we have very ambitious plans to uh, increase the amount of renewable energy we produce, um, and nearly half of all cars now being sold in Ireland um, are, are either electric cars or hybrids, and Hyundai and Kai are among the um, main uh, companies selling cars into Ireland. So I think Noting that he loved Korean dramas and films like Squid Game, Varadka noted that the two countries will increase people-to-people -people exchanges for more collaborations in culture and innovation. Korean culture really has um, grown, I think, around the world. Uh, and, you know, Ireland wouldn't have been very exposed to it maybe 20 years ago, but now people really are. So uh, it's great to see uh, the country spreading its wings in the way it has. All right, thank you very much for your time, Dr. Varadka. Thank you. South Korea is banning short selling for all locally listed stocks until the end of next June. The move comes as concerns rise over illegal activities by global investment banks, with authorities set to investigate 10 major global banks. Shin Sebyeol reports. Starting Monday, short selling is banned for all stocks listed on the local market until the end of the first half of 2024. Short selling is when investors trade with borrowed shares in the hope that the price will fall later so they can buy them back at a lower price and pocket the price difference. The Financial Service Commission, in a press briefing on Sunday, cited illegal short selling activities by global investment banks amid growing uncertainties such as the Israel Hamas war as a reason. Amid global turmoil, we discovered illegal naked short selling by global investment banks and circumstances of additional illegal activities. 
It's a grave situation where illegal short selling undermines fair pricing of stocks and hurts market confidence. During the eight-month ban, the FSC will seek a fundamental improvement in related rules and systems. These include narrowing the different short selling requirements between institutions and individual investors. The measures come amid widespread dissatisfaction among individual investors who faced losses in the recent stock market downturn. The government also plans to establish a real-time blocking system to prevent naked short selling where assets are sold prior to an agreement to borrow is made. To do so, the Commission is set to work with the National Assembly to enact related laws. It will also crack down on illegal activities carried out by global investment banks and seek stronger punishments for them. In the same briefing, FSC Governor Ibokan said 10 global banks accounting for most of the short-selling transactions in South Korea are subject to investigations. Last week, the financial watchdog said it would form a special task force to inspect all global IBs after it exposed two Hong Kong-based investment banks suspected of engaging in illegal short-selling. As for when short selling will be allowed again, the Commission said the decision will be made in consideration of improvements in conditions in June 2024. Shin Sebyeok, Arirang News. For the first time in a decade, food inflation is looking likely to stay above 5 percent for the third consecutive year amid rising prices of oil and agricultural products. Authorities vow all possible measures to minimize the price pressure, especially on seven key items, including milk and sugar. From fruits and vegetables to jam and cheese, the already high prices of food are rising even higher. I only wait for sales. Everyone is like me, waiting for sales flyers. According to Statistics Curry on Sunday, prices of food and beverages, excluding liquors for the period from January to October, were 5.1 percent higher than for the same period last year. By item, ginger was up 97 percent, carrots 34 percent, and jam, cheese and salad dressing all above 20 percent. Food prices briefly cooled in the summer, but food inflation is picking up again as rising oil prices push up the cost of processed food. And the remaining impact of the extreme summer weather still squeezes the supply of agricultural products. At this rate, the yearly inflation rate for food will stay above 5 percent for the third consecutive year, something unseen in the past decade. Meanwhile, prices of eating out also climbed by 6.4 percent on year. The lowest income bracket is hit hardest, as in the latest data from 2021, food expenses took a 44 percent of their spending, much higher than the 30 percent average. Authorities see prices stabilizing in the coming months, with the impact of the bad weather waning and through government efforts such as providing discounts and increasing supplies. The Agricultural Ministry is also set to run a task force to manage seven key food items including instant noodles, bread, snacks, coffee, sugar, milk, and ice cream. Despite China's resumption of group tours to South Korea in August, the economic impact remains limited amid Chinese tourists' changing travel patterns. According to the Korea Tourism Organization on Monday, 264,000 Chinese tourists visited Korea in September, increasing 793.8% on year. However, that figure was only about half compared to September 2019 before the pandemic. It also pointed to changing trends such as more visitors coming as solo travelers rather than as part of a group, including more budget-conscious tourists. And unlike group tours in the past, officials say solo travelers are more interested in popular restaurants and places that are trending on social media than shopping at department stores or duty-free shops, leading to a drop in revenue. In Major League Baseball, Kim Ha-sung of the San Diego Padres has become the first South Korean to win a gold glove. Kim on Sunday backed the National League gold glove in the utility category. He triumphed over competitors Mookie Betts of the Los Angeles Dodgers and Tommy Edmond of the St. Louis Cardinals. MLB introduced this category last year to recognize players with exceptional defensive versatility. 
The Gold Glove winners are chosen through voting by 30 MLB managers and up to six coaches from each team. Before Kim, the closest a South Korean came to winning a Gold Glove was in 2012 when Chu Shin Su was a finalist in the right field category. Jungkook of K-pop group BTS has made more history. His debut solo album, Golden, became the most singly streamed K-pop solo album on the global music streaming platform, Spotify. According to Spotify on Sunday, Jungkook's first solo album released Friday hit nearly 40 million streams on its release day, a record for a K-pop solo artist on the first day of entering its global daily chart. The album's tracks dominated the chart with seven and standing next to you leading the way, ranking top and second respectively. The 11-track album also sold 2 million copies within five hours of its release, making it best-selling K-pop solo album. And more and more K-pop songs nowadays include English lyrics, which a recent study calls a trend within K-pop. What do fans think about it? Our culture correspondent Sung Yujin has this report. These songs show a growing trend within the K-pop industry, more English lyrics. A recent study found that K-pop songs that charted in the top 400 of Circle Chart, a Korean album sales tracker in the first half of this year, had more English lyrics than five years ago. This is mainly because more people around the world are listening to K-pop. In the past, the genre was mostly for listeners at home. But with the global success of artists like Psy, BTS, and Blackpink, K-pop now has a global fan base. The key to popular music lies in connecting with the audience. Incorporating English lyrics can help establish that connection in America and Europe. This way, K-pop can have a broader international appeal. This is also the reason why girl groups incorporate more English lyrics. Female K-pop stars tend to hold a more diverse global fan base than their male counterparts. They're using English more to reach a wider audience. The share of English lyrics in girl groups like Blackpink or New Jeans, who are targeting international markets, is higher than that of IVE, focusing on the local audience. What do fans think about this? Some welcome this change, while others raise questions about its necessity. I think it makes it more um, marketable to the like English speakers, like internationally. So it makes K it makes K-pop more like known to the other countries besides Korea. And I think most people listen to K-pop so that they can engage with Korean culture. So I think it would be nice to keep the two separate. I don't need to always know what every word means because I think the difference between solely Western music versus K-pop music is that you feel, you get the sense, the tone, the, the feeling that they're trying to evoke in the song without even having to know the, the, what the meaning of the word is. And so with K-pop going global, the role of English lyrics is a subject of both celebration and debate among fans. Song Yujin, Arirang News. Let's take a look at what's going on in the world now. In the U.S., the race for the 2024 presidential election is well underway. And a new poll released on Sunday shows the incumbent President Joe Biden is losing to former President Donald Trump in five of the six key swing states. The two are expected to be the main candidates in the next year's election. The poll conducted by the New York Times and Siena College showed Trump was ahead in Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada and Pennsylvania, while Biden only led in Wisconsin. Voting results from these six swing states are instrumental to a candidate's win in most presidential elections. Voters in those states expressed dissatisfaction towards Biden's handling of the economy and saw his age as an issue.
However, Biden campaign spokesperson Kevin Munoz stated that predictions more than a year out tend to look a little different a year later. In Nepal, search and rescue operations continue after a magnitude 5.6 earthquake collapsed houses and caused infrastructural damage in the northwest of the country on Friday. According to reports, at least 157 people died and 375 were injured in the quake that hit rural Jajakot and West Rukum, some 500 kilometers from the capital Kathmandu. A Nepalese police spokesperson said the earthquake was the country's deadliest since the 7.8 magnitude quake in April 2015, which left 9,000 dead and over 20,000 injured. Jajakot, the area closest to the epicenter, has a population of 190,000 scattered across hills in remote areas. Authorities have expressed concerns that the death toll may rise as the rescue operations continue. In Europe, an 18-hour-long armed hostage situation came to an end without resistance at Germany's Hamburg International Airport on Sunday local time. According to reports, a 35-year-old Turkish citizen on Saturday drove through a security fence and onto the airport's tarmac with his four-year-old daughter in the vehicle. Authorities said the man fired a weapon twice and threw burning bottles from his car, which he had parked under a plane. A police spokesperson said the man had acted in protest over a custody dispute with his wife over the care of their daughter. Airport officials said the incident led to the cancellation of 100 flights, but work was being done to resume operations as quickly as possible. More than 50,000 runners from around the world took part on Sunday in the 52nd edition of the New York City Marathon. It is the last of the six World Marathon Majors events scheduled for 2023. Ethiopian Tamirad Tola beat the course record by eight seconds. Tola, who previously won gold at the 2022 World Athletics Championships, finished a 42.195-kilometer race in two hours, four minutes and 58 seconds, breaking the record set by Geoffrey Mutai in 2011. Kenyan runner Helena Beery won the women's title with a record of 2 hours, 27 minutes and 23 seconds. Kim Seong, Arirang News. Good afternoon. Hope your morning went smoothly despite the storm force weather. Downpours with strong winds lashed down on most parts of the country earlier in the day. The weather conditions have improved compared to the earlier hours in most places, except in central parts of the country where on and off showers will continue through tomorrow. About the wind, strong wind alerts are in place across Korea and it's going to be quite windy through tomorrow. Afternoon highs could be lower than today's morning temperatures in Seoul, topping out at 16 degrees Celsius, but southern parts of the country will see highs in the 20s. Now, today's rain is calling wintry weather to the country. After skies clear, we're going to notice much colder air creeping into the country. And we are waking up to a low of just 3 degrees in Seoul tomorrow, nearly 15 degrees lower than the same time today, with a high of just 10 degrees in the capital. Then, a week from today, we are expecting sub-zero morning temperatures. That's Korea for you, and here's a look at the international weather conditions.
The first week of November was unusually warm in many parts of Asia. Japan saw the weekend's daytime high reaching 26.3 degrees Celsius in Tokyo, a 14-year high for November. Parts of South Korea also saw late summer-like temperatures hovering around 20 degrees. The delayed chilly weather has also affected autumn foliage, making tree leaves not as vibrant as usual. Over in northern China, temperatures also exceeded 30 degrees in some parts. Experts point to the planet's natural warm phase called El Nino, which could bring a moderate winter too. But at the same time, global warming and the melting Arctic ice could push down cold air, which together could result in highly fluctuating weather. That is all for today. Thanks for watching.